Hi, I'm Larry Cox with DIY Road Cases. This tutorial deals with a portable road case photo booth. Now, the first thing to keep in mind is that there are many uh, configurations and sizes of these portable photo booths, and we're going to cover the most popular version, the two section, two case style. So, if you are looking for something a bit different in style and design, then it will be up to you to tweak or customize your own photo booth based on what you learn here. Also, please keep in mind that this is not a comprehensive how to build a road case tutorial. We are simply covering the details related to building a road case photo booth. If after watching this video you feel that you need to learn more about the planning and building of road cases, then I highly recommend our flagship educational suite which is available at our online store. This suite is a thorough guide to road case building and comes complete with our comprehensive instructional DVD, our DVD supplement manual, and our flexi case design tool manual. Everything that you need to embark on successful road case building. Now for this tutorial, we have enlisted the help of our good friend Matt Molnar. Matt started out as a customer but it was soon clear to us here at DIY Road Cases that Matt had the talent and ability to be in front of the camera as an educator. So Matt will be assisting me in taking you through the details of this most common style of photo booth. So I'll be back now and then, but for now, I'll turn things over to Matt. Hello everybody. In this video, I'm going to highlight my build of a photo booth. Um, I've been wanting to start a photo booth business and uh, the turnkey pricing is somewhere around six thousand dollars including camera, printer, uh, computer, etc. And the booth itself, the booths can run in the range of around two thousand dollars. So I decided to do it myself. I have a workshop, a, uh, some experience building cabinets, etc. But anybody really with basic tools can build a photo booth. So here are some of the parts I'm going to use in this project. Um, we have handles to lift the cases, spring-loaded handles. I have six of those. I have corner protectors, corners of all the cases. We have casters. And these are spanning latches. These are for doors and uh, the printer door, also to latch the cases together when they're stacked, one on top of the other. Um, these are the corner extrusions. These hold the plywood boxes together. They will be drilled and riveted through the corners into the plywood, through the plywood and into the inside um, extrusion. There's another type of extrusion that fits over the edge of your doors as a lip on it so the door closes against the case. I have uh, for tools a rivet gun, pneumatic rivet gun. I'll be shooting about 500 316 rivets into this project. Anyway, um, these are this here sitting on uh, all this is sitting on the vinyl. This is a 4x8 sheet of vinyl. I bought two of these at $22 each. That's about 40,000 thickness. And uh, this is laminated to the plywood panels with a spray adhesive. Very easy to do. And, uh, and that gives it the nice protective coating on the outside of the case. So um, uh, we'll be doing that today as well as cutting and drilling extrusions. And hopefully be ready for assembly tomorrow, uh, at least part of the assembly. Um, there are various holes or square holes that need to be cut into the sides to insert the handles and latches and so on. So um, um, hopefully this will come across very well and help somebody if you're considering building your own photo booth. So here we go, launch time. Thanks for watching.
I've laid out the cutouts for the flash panel, the lens hole, and the monitor itself. I chose to cut this hole with a jigsaw since I didn't have a hole saw and this is about three and one eighth inch so I use this as a template to draw the circle it's a good fit of course it will come from this side and the flange will rest on the like so and then we'll cut this off excess off and use some silicone or something to uh, hold it in place. I've now finished all my cutting. It's a side panel. These cutouts. I'm corners are for the latching uh, spanning latches the front flash panel camera hole and monitor okay I'm riveting the top handles on the bottom case of my photo booth um, there's a lot of rivets to uh, to this project about 500 um, I'm using the, using this pneumatic rivet gun if anyone thinks you can do this with a handheld rivet gun uh, don't don't even try it uh, these handles have 10 rivets there's four in this case so that's 40 these side corners each have six times eight corners that's 48 um, so almost a hundred just in the corners and the handles and then all the extrusions and the latch uh, latches, spanning latches to latch. Um, here, there's one right here. Spanning latch to latch the top case to the bottom case. Um, washers are required in the sections that uh, are backed by just wood. So we will reach in, put a washer in, just like that. Rivet gun makes short work of it, but still, it's a lot of work. There's just a lot of rivets to this project, or to any project with a road case. Here's the uh, bottom case coming along. It's a printer window. I chose to put casters on it. Some of the spanning latches. Yeah, so it's coming along. Very uh, impressive. And uh, this 3 h plywood, I thought it might be a little flimsy, but when all this is locked together, it is just solid. Even with these large cutouts, it doesn't rack and twist. Pretty, pretty amazing stuff. Ninety-nine rivet number five hundred. My photo booth is finished. Here is the finished product, up and running. Regarding front covers on your upper case half to cover your faceplate region. This is nothing more than personal preference. And again, it depends on the conditions under which you will be moving the booth. If you will be transporting the booth carefully in a personal vehicle, then you may not want to have the added expense and work for creating a lid or faceplate. 
If you have staff moving booths around in company trucks or a van, then protective covers might be a good idea. It's completely up to you, and there are several options available as described in our photo booth manual. Point out some highlights. Click to start. Look up at camera. Printer immediately starts printing within like three seconds. Regarding the printer shelf in the bottom case, it is simply a shelf and requires no further demonstration. Your printer can be held secure with either strapping or well-positioned plank foam pieces that prevent it from moving around. Or as I mentioned earlier, you always have the option to transport it separately in a more protective case if you prefer that method. Okay, here's the inside of the upper cabinet. PC here, 22 inch touchscreen monitor held in place by these little retainer brackets I made. This is the camera shelf which slides up and down on T-tracks. Right in there, you can see. Loosen these on each side and the camera platform will rise and lower. Cut a slot to move the camera in and out according to need. The flash panel is a piece of plexiglass. I've hung my flash from the ceiling. There's a power strip here on the side. This goes down through a hole into the bottom compartment. It's another power strip. It plugs into that, the printer plugs into that, and the USB cable from the printer goes back up through the hole and plugs into the computer. Lower section is storage. Hi everyone. I want to show you now how the interior of the photo booth is laid out. Show you some details on the camera platform, the monitor platform, and the power strips and those kinds of things and I hope this helps. I removed the computer tower so I can show you the detail of how that is held in place in the case. I use a full-size tower so uh, if you're using a laptop this obviously doesn't apply. Regarding your particular computer choice you might use a tower as seen here in this tutorial. However, you may also want to use a laptop or a self-contained touchscreen computer or even a tablet. The option will be yours as to what you choose and how you choose to mount it. What you see here in our tutorial will work for any type of computer option that you go with with a little bit of modification on your part. Remember that there are photo booth apps and software available for all of these computer options. I made these brackets and just used some of my spray adhesive and foam on the insides. Cut a slot on each side. As you can see these are just cutoffs from the uh, material I use for the side walls of the case. And I got a couple brackets, riveted them in, and then this strap goes over the top of the tower and cinches it down. You can see with pencil marks I did the outline of my tower being careful to leave enough room so the CD case could open and close and then I placed these drilled and riveted them into place. Seems to work okay there may be a better way but that's what I'm doing. Um, the monitor support this monitor is fairly heavy so you you want it to rest at the proper height to your cutout hole so I made a little, just a little table, you might say, and uh, it's glued. And here I put a little stay 
uh, to keep it from sliding out away from the front of the case. So um, that works very well. On the top side, I made these brackets. This has a threaded insert on the opposite side. So there's a threaded insert here. If you can see that. And uh, these are very easy to install. You drill the proper size hole, they screw into the wood, and then the threaded knob will screw into that. Now the way I made these is I made this block slightly thinner than the thickness of the monitor. This allows this piece to cantilever in and press the monitor against the foam strip that surrounds the monitor cutout. Hope that all makes sense. Put that together in a few minutes. Now on this side we have the power strip mounted um, and this powers the monitor, the computer tower, the flash up here, studio flash, also the camera. You're going to want to have a camera AC adapter. I got this one off Amazon and uh, well, that's very important. So next we'll take apart uh, this camera shelf a little bit and give you details on how that's made. Okay, here's a detail of the bolt that holds the camera shelf to the side. You'll see it's a slotted bolt that fits this threaded knob. It slides into the T-track. Now obviously this, this bolt goes through the side of the camera shelf and then this knob screws on and tightens it in place. The T-tracks themselves are just riveted into place in two spots. Now, one of the nice things about this design is that you can obviously slide the platform up and down. Uh, in case you have a backup camera, let's say, that has a motor drive on the bottom and has more thickness from the center line of the lens to the base of the camera, you can easily adjust that. Also, you can tilt up and down. I found this useful on the job when, for instance, I was shooting a Halloween gig with lots of little kids. So I tilted the camera slightly down because you obviously can't raise and lower the booth um, for uh, different heights of clients. So this is a way to adjust that, and that seems to work very well. Uh, if you loosen these just a little, um, you will get a friction fit. You'll see it's still quite tight, yet movable. No danger of that going anywhere. It's very firm. Um, so, one thing to keep in mind when you attach these sides, and I use plywood for the bottom. I highly recommend plywood. The sides, that's not important. I used pocket holes in the back, pocket hole screws to come down in and I wanted to make sure I had plenty of strength. Obviously you don't want this joint failing in your camera to fall. Cameras are not very heavy, however, uh, don't just glue this joint. Either screw up through the bottom or use a pocket hole or something to make sure you have a secure uh, joint there. Okay, and this is just a little bit of edging that I put on the plywood. Cleans it up a little bit. The flash I'm using is a studio flash. Um, it's a flash point, and I purchased this at Adorama in New York City. It's like $50, very inexpensive. You can dial your power uh, in. It has a modeling light, interchangeable or replaceable flash bulbs and modeling lights. It's worked very well for me, much better than a shoe mount flash in my opinion. And um, the way I mounted it, these mount on a uh, number of stands, but mounts very well on a 5.8 studio stand, which I'll show you now. 
This one is made by Matthews, and um, there's originally a piece that's meant to clamp into a drop ceiling, one of the metal bars that support the panels in the drop ceiling. And I just took that clip off, and there's a screw coming through the top of the case. I'm having problems with my focus. The screw comes through the top of the case into the threaded portion, and that's it. Drill a quarter inch hole or so. You screw it in and you're done and it, and you can hang that flash from the top of your case okay here's everything put back together this is the strap I spoke about and it's pretty robust I, st I uh, transport this photo booth in the back of my pickup truck so I never lay it on the side but I think it would be no problem with this setup back together. See the power strip on the side. One question some have had is um, how this flash panel, this diffuser, is installed. And it's very simple. With your, on the edge of your cutout, install self-stick foam tape. It's like a half inch wide black tape. You pull the backing off put it around the perimeter you can see a little bit sticking out on the top there and then these glass retainer clips there's many types on the market just hold a piece of this plexi and I found this on Amazon you know it works very well just like a soft box it gives nice soft even uh, lighting on the subjects Some flash units have a secondary light that's known as a modeling light. This is a light that can stay on constantly as needed to illuminate the subject and helps the photographer in setting up the shots. It is not as bright as the flash, but helps show where the light and shadows will fall, especially under low light conditions, prior to the flash engaging when the photos are taken. A modeling light is not necessary, but it can be a great help. You can also create your own modeling light if your flash doesn't have one by adding your own secondary light such as Matt demonstrates in this tutorial. One last tip. Um, the modeling light on these studio flashes has a fairly limited lifespan and uh, rather than depend on that to um, throw a light on my subjects for focusing, um, I added this very inexpensive light, clip-on light. I think I picked this hood up at Walmart and put a um, uh, fluorescent light in there and uh, it's one of the instant-on type. Works very well. Inexpensive fix to uh, you know a problem that could occur with the modeling lights of these studio flashes, especially the cheaper ones. Uh, you don't want your modeling light to go out and you know not have a backup this obviously it's much easier to get backups than it would be for the specific type of bulb required by these studio lights so something you may want to consider in your own booth regarding the transport of your photo booth there are different perspectives on this the verdict is about 50 50 as to whether folks transport their photo booth uh, with their sensitive components inside now this all depends on the conditions under which you're going to move your photo booth around and basically how protectively you mount the components inside. Some folks choose to transport their computer and camera in a separate case as they are the most sensitive items. It's all up to you and how carefully you plan to transport your photo booth. Also, how isolated and protected the components are inside. Well, there you have it. Everything you need to know about creating your own photo booth. I'd like to thank Matt Molnar for his expertise and his wonderful teaching abilities in helping us here at DIY Road Cases. I'm sure you're going to see much more of him down the road with future projects. For us here at DIY Road Cases, I'm Larry Cox. We'll see you on the road.